In this video, I'll be talking about Heroic Tales. It's a rules light fantasy role playing game. It is pay what you want on Drop to RPG. Let's take a look at it. So, as you can see, it's got some pretty nice little art. Um, overall, I think the layout for its minimal amount of pages is very good. And uh, here we go. So, as you can see, this is the main page. We got one, two, three. Then we've got some uh, character sheets at the back. So really it's about three pages. Uh, so you have characters, you have a role. Uh, select a fantasy role like fighter, cleric, magic user, or rogue. They're skilled at four things. So uh, describe four things the character is skilled at. One starts at two and the others all have one point. So two points for your main one and then one point. So obviously there's some options like diplomacy, languages, magic, picking locks, everything you pretty much know. And then you are a species. So different species have different abilities. A dwarf, theory, they can attempt to find the path through a dungeon or a cave system. A lot of this stuff is going to be very much stuff that you would expect. Um, the elf, they are an elven archer. All bow attacks are with advantage and plus one skill die. Uh, giant kin, they roll with advantage when saving against magical attacks. They're also being huge, they can roll all agility checks with disadvantage. So it uses an advantage and disadvantage type system. You've got halflings, humans, lizard men, and wolf kin, which is interesting. And you have health. Health is the number of hits a, a character can take before being injured. Small characters have four, medium five, large six, and huge eight. Each, uh, huge characters always roll agility checks at disadvantage because they're so big. You've got gear. So give a character a weapon of choice and typical gear. So pretty easy. You can advance. When, in, when it seems appropriate, add one to an existing skill or take a new skill starting with one point. Skills max out at three points. So you've got, how does it work? You've got the challenge roll. So build a dice pool of D6 based on the situation and the character skill. So the, the check dice, disadvantage is 1D6, normal is 2, and advantage is 3D6. You'll never roll more than 3 check dice. Skill dice, when a skill applies, add 1D6 to the pool for each skill point. You may want them to be a different color or size, as it says. So special abilities and items may also add skill dice to the pool. You'll never more, roll more than 6 skill dice. So you're going to be rolling possibly a lot of dice. So success or failure. Roll all the dice together. And if any of the, the dice land on a 5 plus or any of the skill dice is a 6, the number of 5s and 6s rolled may be used to determine the outcome. Failing forward is an option. A failed roll can be a success at a cost. So the only thing I see about that is probably why you need to have different colored dice. I think some players might get confused about 5 plus and 6s on these dice and 5s or 6s on these other dice. But it's something that probably in time you'd be able to work out. So the facilitator who runs the game may request a save roll in order to prevent something from happening to the character. For example, to avoid taking damage from a fall. It works just like a normal roll. Then you've got crits. So if more than half of the rolled dice are sixes, it's a success. And a failure is failure is more than half of the di rolled dice are one. So that's not good. So it has uh, magic. So you take the magic skill or religion for clerics. And characters start with cast points equal to their magic or religion skill points plus four. So to cast, describe the magic feat they are trying to perform, and the GM will assign an effort level based on difficulty. Two, three, four, or five for very hard. Roll to cast a spell, and after a successful cast, roll a d6. Reduce your cast points by one if the result is less than the effort. So the effort is that two, three, four, five. Cannot cast spells which require more effort than current cast points. Characters will need to study or pray to their deity or to replenish their casting points. Of course, I do like that magic uh, uh, system there as it very much reminds me of a little bit of pocket fantasy, my own game. So then you've got items. Rare items may have powers which add additional skill dice to the pool when applicable. The number of dice added depends on how advanced the item is. So you've got basic, advanced, and next level gives you three. So then you've got combat. So you roll to fight. You've got the challenge roll. The enemy takes hits equal to the number of successes, and the character takes hits equal to the enemy's attack rating minus their number of successes. So you've got injuries, of course. The character dies when they take their third untreated injury. You've got healing. Clerics can cast three effort healing spell to remove one injury once, uh, once a day per character. It takes two days of downtime to remove one injury, and healed injuries turn into celebrated scars. Armor, uh, arm when hit and wearing armor, you can choose to reduce the armor points by one to absorb all hits. At the end of combat, reset the armor points to their full amount. Small characters get plus one armor point and may never, and may not wear next level armor. 
next level armor imposes disadvantage on all agility type checks. So I see a lot of different types of games kind of in this. Uh, this some of this stuff kind of reminds me of like the Black Hack. Uh, you've got shields, can be used to block all hits and cannot be used with two-handed weapons, of course. Roll 1d3 when taking when, ta when taking to determine the number of blocks it provides. Obviously, a better shield if you roll higher. Spend one block to block all hits. Must be repaired when reduced to zero blocks. Then you've got enemies, and they are based off their health and their attack, and they've got several categories. Trivial, low, medium, high, and heroic. You've got a little mini uh, bestiary here, so animated statue, fire giant, as you can see, uh, very small um, stat blocks here that we, of course, enjoy and definitely reminds me a little bit of Pocket Fantasy. And then up at the top, we've got Create an Adventure. So you're going to roll some stuff up for the Knight's Adventure. Your patron has given you a quest to, so venture forth into, but beware of this. And, of course, roll a dungeon. And then the theme of the room, all of this definitely is very familiar to me, and I like the way that they've gone about doing it. And then you've got an oracle. So this is going to help you play this game solo. Ask the oracle a yes or no question to learn more about the area, including traps, threat level, and secret doors. What you roll depends on how likely the answer will be yes. So likely, roll 2d6 and take the, the highest. Even is roll 1d6. And unlikely, roll 2d6 and take the lowest. So it's going to have your little oracle table on the bottom right there. And then you've got some optional rules to add more crunch to your game. You've got item durability. You've got item abilities. You've got... Uh, where you can move some pips around. They can add pips to skill dice, the pips being the dots on a D6. And you've got something called grit. Um, you've got rules for cover, challenging tasks, pick a difficulty and have the player roll multiple times, adding up the successful dice until they get the total number of successes or three failed rolls. You've got missing rules, which of course embraces the rule of cool rule when unsure of what roll should be. Simply roll 2d6 and add a skill die if the character roll or backfire or background applies. Also, you can also you can always use advantage or disadvantage to change up the odds. There's rules for ranged weapon ammo, which you're going to roll either a one or two at the end of combat to see if you've lost some ammo. Again, very much reminds me of Black Hack. You've got rules for friendly friendly fire. And then you've got some stuff for the facilitator roles. Damage, enemies and NPCs, how much health they have in their key, their key skills, as well as group initiative. And you've got some tips down here on how to do armor, magic, and then the player facing versus facilitator roles. So uh, then you've got your character sheets here, as you can see. So overall, this is a pay what you want, very good little uh, uh, light fantasy rule set that is has many things that are familiar to me as well as some other games. And I like the way it is laid out here. I like the font it uses, the color it uses, everything like that. Um, it seems like a cool little pay what you want game. So there it is, Heroic Tales. I hope uh, maybe you'll check this out. Uh, it's pay what you want. So as always, see if you can give them some money and help them on their role-playing game career. So if you had fun with this or any other game, let me know down in the comments. And as always, I will have a link in the description. So thank you very much.